Hey guys, Sam from Mouncers Makes and Moose Mike. Very casual weekend, Mike. Don't think you guys have seen him like this before, have you? <laughs> that is because we got an early start on today's segment, which we will get into in just a second. So we are actually filming this on a Saturday. And on a Saturday, Mike doesn't have to be clean shaven and smart for work. This is the real Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so it is Thursday when you are seeing this, so you are seeing us from the past as normal on this channel. And if you are new here, oh, welcome back to all my returners and hi to any newbies. It's so great to have you here. And if you like what you see, please thumb give thumb. us a thumb. Anyway, if you are new here mm. on a Thursday, every single week, we do this segment known as Tile of the Week. Thursday, and I will list the playlist or put the playlist for this uh, segment down in the description box so that you can go back and watch other episodes if you so wish. And if you are new, I will just briefly explain. I got this in Happy Mail back last July. It's 100 Crochet t Tiles by Sarah Callard. It was gifted to me off of my Amazon wish list. I am not sponsored or affiliated. Just letting you know where you can get yourself a copy if you want to. And again, no pressure, just saying. And when I opened it on that Happy Mail video, I made the verbal contract of, I'm gonna make one tile every week for a hundred weeks. Didn't compute, but a hundred tiles means over two years. But hey, we're on the journey and we're seeing it through and we are currently on week 33. So we are about a third of the way through, which is absolutely wonderful. And like I said, all the other uh, episodes you can see down in the playlist, down in the description box. I made that pledge, not knowing what I was getting myself into. Mike valiantly said that he would do it to support me alongside me. And if you don't know, Mike only learned to crochet last April so he still hasn't even been doing it a year yet but he wanted to show his support again I don't think he realized what he was getting himself into but here we are we've done it every week so you know well there has been a couple of breaks you know but only one week that we've missed and then we've caught up again um and a few of our wonderful Yarny friends here on the YouTube streets in the crochet and fiber community decided to jump on board and join us I am not going to list them because I always end up forgetting someone and that upsets me and I don't like doing that. So if you put in the search bar on your YouTube, hashtag tile of the week Thursday, anyone who has uploaded a video using that hashtag will pop up. So go on a tile of the week treasure hunt and find out who else is involved. I didn't start it as a crochet along. I started it as a thing for myself and Mike, but we have had some wonderful people jump on board and they're love enthusiasm and support is absolutely overwhelming so to all of those that are joining in thank, thank you. you so so much and it's not just podcasters or content creators there are a couple of wonderful subscribers that are joining in along the way as well and when they email me pictures of the tiles they have made i do post them on my community tab so if you want to see what others in the community are doing who do not have a channel please do check my community tab when these videos upload because there will be pictures of their wonderful makes as well and to those people thank you so so much for joining in and showing your support it means the world to both of us so shall we get down to it yes. week 33 known as the persephone tile the designer is hattie risdale she called for four different colors of yarn she recommended a lightweight three or a DK weight and a four millimeter hook. Now we both used DK weight or lightweight three weight scraps because that is what mostly our scrap bin is full of. With four millimeter clover. With, yes, both of us because I have two and we mm -hmm. each use one. Um, uh, In fact, I have well and truly commandeered it. Yeah, it's mine, but it never gets <laughs> handed back to me, but you know um because mike was a failed man but he crossed over to clover and i yes, actually and haven't used that fells since no so there we have it so would you like to see what persephone is supposed to look like there she is 
do ours look like that? You're wondering? Well, possibly. Now, Mike will explain his colour choice and why he chose those colours and he will showcase his first because he did it to the T. He had four colours. He mm -hmm. did what he did. I didn't choose four colours. I went a little bit rogue again, but not much this week. Not as rogue as last week's, but I'll hand you over to Mike. He can show his and explain the reasons <clears throat> behind his colours. I will show you mine, explain my reasons behind my colours, and then we'll give you our opinion. Okay, so my colour choice this week, which I'm not going to show you yet, I'm going to explain why first. I chose the colours because the name of the tile is the same name for one of our lovely dear friends, La, La La at, oh, Mad. Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming, animals. <laughs> um, she has a, a cat, a new cat that um, is called Persephone, um, or Persniffers as she likes to call them. Or just Sniffers. Or Sniffers, yeah. So I picked the colours of Persephone the cat. So hopefully this is uh, a good homage. A good homage for Lala's cat, and I hope Lala enjoys it. And if you don't know Lala and Persniffers, yes, go check them out. Go check them out. I'll link their channel down in the description box because actually, Lala is one of our friends who is joining in. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I have chosen Persniffers as colours. So here's mine, and there is brown in the middle. Yep. Black, orange, orange. And white, which yep. is pretty much the same colours as yeah, Persniffers. Definitely. And I wanted to do that because of the name of the tile. Yeah. And I love Lala, but not in a weird way. <laughs> not in a creepy way. <laughs> okay, so that is the reason behind Mike's colour choices. Now, I obviously had a similar plan to do that, but I let Mike choose his colours first, and he went with the whole Sniffers route. So I thought, I didn't really want to do the same colours because then we'll both be fighting over the same colour yarns because we only have a limited number of scraps in each colour. And um, even if you change the order of the colours used, it's still going to have a pretty similar vibe. I also know that a couple of other people that are joining in with us are planning to do an homage to Sniffers herself. So there will be a lot of these tiles done in that colourway. So I decided to take a back step and just do whatever colours I fancied doing and I didn't want to do four colours simply because I wanted a more cohesive look to my tile and the fourth colour which is actually the first colour you use is only used in that tiny little central bit because if you look at Mike's there's only that central bit in brown yeah. and then it's not used again so for me that was a bit pointless I didn't like that I wanted my tile to be more cohesive so I just picked three colours now, if we go back to the original, you can see that there is a pale yellow in the centre, two different shades of green and a pale pink. I did the opposite. I did two colours of purple, not pink. Shocker. Mantha's favourite colour is pink if she has to pick one. But I decided to go for purple because why not? Also, it was the ones that were on the top of the bin and I didn't want to dig. Um, and then I wanted the green and I've done it in a way where hopefully my bobbles look like flowers on top of leaves. And I think it does to a point. So here is mine and the colour is not being done justice. No. The pale purple is more of a red tinge as in it's more lavender or lilac. It is not that bluey tone that the camera is picking up. Also, the green is a little bit more of a vibrant green, a bit more of a leprechaun green, in my opinion. And it was St. Patrick's Day last week. So there we go. And it was St. Patrick's Day that we started making it. So maybe that was the influence. And then the purple is a little bit more rich. It is being um, blue toned out a little bit. But as you can see, especially up here, these purple bobbles, especially this middle one, is nestled on what looked like a pair of leaves. So I hoped to create a more flowery look to my tile. 
and like I said I skipped the one random different colour in the middle just so that the whole thing ties together and that is the reasoning behind my colours. Now our opinions on the tile Mike. Love the colours because it personifies Persephone. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing so we, absolutely we were doing fine. fine until we got to the bit where round six. Yeah, round six, <clears throat> and then we had to leave it for a night because we didn't know how to do it. Well, I had figured it out mostly, but mm. there was just one little part of the technique that I had lost in here, and I had to go YouTube searching yes. for a tutorial think, just to finesse <clears throat> what I was trying I think to do. This tile. The person who creates these patterns, the same woman that done this tile, mm -hmm. needs to explain things more. Yeah. Her patterns are not written for the basic um, or beginner, or beginner crocheter. crocheter. No, you have to know everything before you do hers. Yes, and that which is, is a, annoying. It is annoying, and it is a very valid point because Hattie Risdale, which is the designer of this tile, she also did last week's, and she has featured in previous tiles also. And I think a common comment when doing Hattie Risdale's tiles is that she is not clear enough in her written instructions. No. Now, for me, it isn't too bad in the fact that I do have nine years of crocheting under my belt. I have done some of these techniques before, even if it was years ago, which in the case of round six, it was years ago. I had most of it stored but there was just a little part that I had forgotten and had to refresh by watching YouTube tutorials, which is not a problem because what a brilliant resource we have at our fingertips in mm -hmm. order to find what we need. However, when you buy a pattern book, you hope that the person who wrote that pattern thinks in such a way and writes in such a way that anybody can pick that pattern up and be able to mm. work through it. Now, if she had put in a disclaimer at the top, more for intermediate or advanced, she would have got away with the fact that she was relying on us to have prior knowledge of some of these techniques that you need. Yep. But without Sorry. that little disclaimer, it makes it appear that it is suitable for all, and it's really not. If you are a beginner at crochet, this isn't one that I recommend because it is a bit of a fiddly, faffy technique and not a technique that Mike or I particularly enjoyed. So building up to round six, like Mike absolutely said, fine. was absolutely fine. Mm. Going Move along, merrily away, absolutely fine. And then round six came and bang, I hit a stumbling block, a mind blank. It was getting late and I said, we're gonna have to put it down until I have time to do some research on YouTube, mm -hmm. refresh myself on how to do it, and pick it up again tomorrow night. And guys, I even tried to figure it out. He did. And I put forward a technique, it just didn't work. But it was very close to working. So mm -hmm. with, with Mike not even having crocheting for a year yet, with some of the things that A, these tiles have taught us, yeah. B, some of the knowledge that I have given him, mm -hmm. and him obviously seeing a lot of other things that are going on in the crochet world as well, he tried to pick up his hook and figure it out, which is a bold step for somebody who hasn't been doing it for very long. And I admired the fact that he tried to figure it out for me because I, at the time, was in quite a bit of pain. My mm -hmm. mind was not in the game properly. Mm -hmm. And I had just lost all patience because I knew it is something that I had done before and I had forgotten and it frustrated me. So Mike tried to save the day and what he tried to do would have worked other than a slight tweak. Um, what I was trying to do is most of what we did have to do, but I had just forgotten the last little bit and that's fine, you know, not a problem. Like I said, that's why we've got YouTube and wonderful other creators out there that do these tutorials for people that need these refreshers anyway we managed to suss it out in the end we managed to get through it and after round six the last two rounds are again easy breezy street not a problem got it done it was just round six that caused a stumbling block 
because what you had to do guys is you had to start in my case in the pale um lilac you had to drop that yarn and add in the bobble color you had to create the bobble with the working yarn still on your hook when you would put your bobble stitches on your hook you then had to drop that yarn pick up the one that you started with pull that through to complete your bobble and then carry on your merry way with your working carry yarn on the black but, but the bobble yarn had to be stitched over. over. You had to carry the bobble yarn along with you all the way around. My top tip if you are carrying yarn is every few stitches just pull that carrying yarn tight so that you cannot see it on the back. Because as you can see here, you cannot see the darker purple on the back because the stitches hide it. Now, it is a very wonderful technique to know. I'm not going to show you mine. Well, I am, actually. But you can still see my black a little bit. Just in these little holes. No, here, but that's where you... But that's the bobbles, but I that's believe. The, yeah, you're not seeing in between your bobbles. You are, you are not seeing Mike's black yarn through these stitches or through these stitches. So it is hidden. It's only where the bobbles come into play. Mm. Because you have to then bring your, yeah, what I called the working yarn, over the bobble to carry on working with it. So, if any of that made sense, congratulations to you, because I am not the best at explaining. Um, I managed to fudge my explaining enough for Mike to get it. And also, with Mike sitting next to me and we doing it together, I can actually physically show him what I mean if my words are not very clear. But for me to do it over video is a very different story. That is why you have not seen any tutorials here at Mantha's Makes. And also, I do not have the time to sit and create my own patterns yet, guys. I just do not have the time. I have a job outside the home. We have the four kiddies. Mike works full time. And we get literally an hour or two maximum of an evening to sit and crochet. We have also committed to doing other things at the moment anyway as regards to content for the channel. And obviously I have to film these videos in spare moments as well because I do content every day. So I do not have the time to design, but I do intend to at some point in the future. I don't know if that's going to be in a year, five years, ten years, but at some point when my life isn't as hectic, I really do want to give it a go because I rely on other people's designs all the time for all the makes that I create to showcase for you. There are a lot of things that I find in others' patterns where in my head I'm like, well, why did you do it that way? It would have been much easier if you had. And that is sparking a, well, maybe you could design it, word it differently, be more clear, have a better effect. Then I have my own pattern. But like I said, I can't go any further than, what did you do it that way for? <laughs> because I just don't have the time. But one day in the future, guys, one day in the future. So, yes, we were fine apart from round six. Before round six, perfect. After round six, perfect. Round six. And no. big shout out to Lala's cat for sniffers. Sniffers! And if you are familiar with Sniffers, she can be a little monkey. She keeps Lala on her toes all the time. <laughs> so, in true Sniffers uh, fashion, even this pattern with her name kept us on our toes. And I am interested to see how Lala got on this week to see if she had the same difficulties. But Lala might be the queen of crochet and had no difficulties because she knows how to do this stuff. Yes. Who knows? But yeah, it will be quite funny if Sniffers gives her grief in her crocheting <laughs> as well as in the background. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that was week 33, the Persephone tile. I now need to delve into the book and find what we are going to be making next week. Yes, I ripped a page out because they're all falling out anyway. Don't be shock horror, you're ruining a massacre in a book because it did it to itself and I'm just helping it. <laughs>
So next week, week 34, will be the Hestia tile. And it is another Hattie. Oh no, I lied earlier. I said last week's was Hattie Risdale. Last week's wasn't Hattie Risdale. It was Julie Yeager and we loved it. Yes. I'm getting myself all confused. Ignore what I said earlier. Last week's tile was beautiful, lovely, and we love Julie Yeager's tile designs. We are not fans of Hattie Risdale's. This week coming up, week 34, the Hestia tile is another by Hattie Risdale. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is what the Hestia should end up looking like. This lady loves clusters, loves bobbles, and loves spike stitches. So there's more of those to come. Can't wait. This one calls for four colours of DK or Lightweight 3, so we're sorted again this week. And again, she recommends a four millimetre hook. So we are sorted. We just need to pick our colours. And who knows, maybe this time I'll cheat. And we will obviously <laughs> come back next Thursday and show you how we got on with the Hestia tile. So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in today and listening to us talk about our tile of the week Thursday. We will be back tomorrow with crochet catch up as we always are on a Friday. Um, what else? Saturday will be our normal live on our channel because all the birthday parties are done now. Um, so we are just going to have one of our normal lives straight after Granny D if Granny D goes or if it's Dory again. And Dory, if you're watching, thank you so much for looking yes. after our beautiful Granny D. Thank you. We really, really appreciate it. Because if I could, I would. Yeah, we both would. We'd jump on a plane and head straight over, but unfortunately that isn't possible. So, Dory, you are doing what each and every one of us in this crochet community want to do. So thank you very, very much. But we will be on our usual time on Saturday. No idea for Sunday. Monday, Magazine Monday. No idea for Tuesday and Wednesday. I wing it here. I literally just film... <laughs> and pluck ideas out of thin air for most of it, apart from my regular segments. But there is always content every day. I manage to fill my days with something, mostly crochet and yarny content, but sometimes a little bit different. So you just have to stay tuned to find out what's to coming be fair, up. fair, guys, there's always yarny content here because look, look at it all. There's apart loads. from if we're driving in the car or going oh, for yes, a walk. Yes, but, yes. you know, mostly there and is... And before the wall was there. Yes, indeed. But there is always something to look forward to every single day. And I always try and find content for you. So please do stay tuned. So we will see you tomorrow for Crochet Catch Up as always. I hope your Friday goes awesomely. And we will see you on the weekend for our live on Saturday. But until then, stay safe. be kind. Look after one another. Get some good quality time in with your loved ones. Get some good quality crafting time in. We will see you in the next one. All around the YouTube streets. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you, love.